let's run an analysis of variance, ANOVA. I'm going to use the data file D3, a two-way analysis of variance, which simply means that I have two independent variables. In ANOVA, you need to have a continuous variable as your dependent variable. In this case, we have happiness. And uh, I have two categorical variables as our independent variables. Gender, which has two levels, female and male, and uh, condition, which has three levels. Imagine that we randomly assign our participants to three groups. And in each group, they did a, a different activity. So we want to use gender and condition to uh, predict happiness. Analyze general linear model univariate. Our dependent variable is happiness. And I have two independent variables. We send both of them to fixed factor box here. Click on uh, options and choose descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size and homogeneity tests. Continue. And now we can click on OK. The first table is a descriptive table, just giving us the sample size in each group. And this table is a more detailed table. Before you look at the, the main results of your ANOVA, you have to uh, check something. First, uh, let's look at this table, uh, Levine's test of equality of error variances. This is a test of uh, an important assumption for ANOVA, equality of variances. Specifically, most of the time we look at uh, this value for the mean, this significance level. If it's not significant, then we just proceed with the, with the rest of uh, results. That makes everything easier. It means that we can assume equality of variances. If this value is significant, it is smaller than 0 0.05, we cannot assume equality of variances. So what should we do if this is significant? In a different video, I will tell you what to do if this is significant. For, but in this demonstration, it is not significant. So we can just proceed uh, and look at this table. Tests of between, between subject effects. Here you have gender, condition, and uh, as you can see, ANOVA automatically includes the interaction term for gender and condition. So you have two main effects, gender, condition, and an interaction effect, gender by condition. So let's look at the results for gender. Uh, the F value is 0.5 and it is not significant. You cannot uh, predict the level of happiness by knowing the participant's gender. And condition, the F value is 60.5 and it is significant. So condition predicts uh, the level of happiness. So the main effect of condition is important. It matters in which group the participant was because these groups have different levels of happiness. What about the interaction term? It's not significant. So this means that gender and condition are not interacting in their effect on happiness. So we only have one significant main effect here. But what does it mean when we say that there is a condition is a significant predictor of happiness? Uh, what exactly it means? We have three levels. So the difference between level one and level two is significant uh, or not. The, the, the difference between level one and level three is significant or not. We, we still don't know that. We just know that there is at least one significant difference between the levels of condition, but we don't know where the significant difference actually is. For that, we need to do some extra work. I go to analyze, general linear model, univariate, this time, I click on post hoc and I send condition to this box. I want 
to request post hoc tests for condition. First of all, we never send variables that have less than three levels to this box. So even if gender is a significant predictor, we don't send it here because it has only two levels. So if the main effect of gender is significant, it's obvious that the difference is between level one and level two. So we don't need to check for that. We don't need post hoc tests for that. Condition goes here because first, it's a significant predictor and we want to know which levels of condition are different from each other. And second, it has more than two levels. Then you have some options here. These are uh, post hoc tests that you can uh, request. Please refer to your textbook to, to make a decision which one is best for for in the context of your analysis. Uh, let's just, for this demonstration, choose two key. So I click two key and then continue. And then I click OK. You basically get the same results, but this time you have a new table here, post hoc test. We requested a two key HSD test. And here you can see the pairwise uh, comparisons. So group one and group two, uh, the difference between them is significant. Group one and group three, the difference is significant. Group two and group three, the difference is significant. So basically all of the groups had different levels of happiness. Th that's uh, how the post hoc test can help us understand where the, the significant differences actually are. So we need to get post hoc tests if there is a significant uh, main effect. And that variable has more than two levels. Another thing that you can do here is to get plots. Again, I click on Analyze, General Linear Model, Univariate, and click on Plots. Here, you can ask for a plot for condition. Uh, so you send it here and then click on add. For ANOVA, we usually use bar charts. Uh, bar charts are preferred, and it's good to get error bars, confidence intervals. Then click continue. Okay, everything is the same, but this time you have a bar chart showing the levels of uh, happiness for each group. I just wanted to also talk about effect sizes. Let's look at this table, tests of between subjects effects. Here you get an R squared, which is 66%. So together, gender, condition, and the interaction term, together they explain about 66% of the variance in happiness. But then you have partial A to squared here. This gives uh, information about your individual predictors. Uh, the only effect size that you can get for your uh, independent variables uh, in SPSS is partial eta squared. And you see that for gender is less than 1%. For condition is about 62%. And for the interaction term is about 4%. Uh, obviously condition is the strongest a predictor of happiness. And uh, the contribution of gender is uh, really trivial. A bit on reporting, I highly recommend that you report this table in APA format. Also, you have to mention your Levin's test, uh, if equality of variances can be assumed or not. Here, you have three effects, the main effect of gender, uh, condition, and the interaction term, and you have to report them separately. For gender, this is your F value, significance level, and your partial at squared. And you need to also report degrees of freedom for gender, and that would be 1 and 75, the error degrees of freedom. So 1 and 75. For condition, uh, degrees of freedom are 2 and 75, and for gender by condition, 2 and 75. For 
condition, this is your F value, significance level, and partial A to squared, you have to report. And for the interaction term, F value, significance level, and uh, partial A to squared. One way to report this specific ANOVA is like this. Uh, the descriptive table in APA format. And here you, you report uh, that uh, gender did not affect the level of, did not predict the level of happiness. So degrees of freedom one and 75, this is your F value, P value and partial A to squared. For condition, experimental condition, two and 75, Degrees of freedom is this is your F value, P value, and partial A to squared. And this these are for the interaction term. And then you report uh, that the, the three variables together explain about 66% of the variance in happiness scores. And you refer refer to your descriptive table. And also because the, the effect of condition, the main effect. Uh, condition was significant. Here you need to uh, mention about the levels of condition. So which groups were different from each other. In our case, we use two key uh, as as our uh, post hoc test two key HSD, and it showed that all of the differences between the three levels, all of the pairwise pairwise differences were significant. So we uh, simply mentioned that all of all of them them were uh, significant at P is smaller than 0 0.001. Now let's do it in JASP. In JASP, click on ANOVA. Uh, we can send happiness here and gender and condition to fix factors box. This is your basic ANOVA test for gender, main effect of gender, main effect of condition, and the interaction term. So F values and P values. You can get descriptive statistics. And in JASP, you can get three types of uh, effect sizes for each of your predictors. So you can get um, eta squared, partial eta squared, and omega squared, which are very similar to each other. But uh, some methodologists argue that one of them is better than the other one. Uh, so please refer to your textbook. You can also check for assumptions, homogeneity test, uh, Levin's test here again, and uh, post hoc test. You can get post hoc test for condition. Uh, for example, you can get the two key results and one thing which is very attractive about JASP is uh, the kind of plots that you can get. So here we can get uh, rain cloud plots. Let's get one for a condition. 